I'm actually from Hong Kong, so uh, but I have left Hong Kong for long years, but I uh, still quite concerned about uh, issues or particular water issues and flood issues in Hong Kong and other uh, cities in Asia. So today I will talk about it. So um, we talk about flood risks. So uh, actually, flooding is a natural process, you know. So uh, flooding will happen, and it's happening, and uh, it's very hard to stop it, right? So uh, we, if we talk about risk, it relates to, first, it relates to people, and second, relate uh, about uh, property, so let's say money and finance. Okay. So that means that risk actually will be um, normally higher if the cities is with our higher populations and if the cities is very expensive. So, um, we can look at uh, uh, some neighborhood around us. So you can see Tokyo is at 37 million people, Osaka 30 million, Shanghai 25, and Jakarta 16 million. So uh, we talk about this kind of numbers, even maybe it's more than a population than a country called Australia. Right? And uh, so it's happening, and uh, the urbanization rate this is the UN map from 1982. So we can see actually those big cities, like uh, most uh, those big cities is around Asia actually. So uh, it's happening. And then um, one of the reasons maybe is globalization. But I'm, I'm not an expert on the economy. So uh, I will leave those things for the discussion about uh, these uh, two economies. But uh, this is one of the issues I found is uh, uh, and has a lot of uh, people get jobs and uh, won't live in big cities. And uh, so actually, uh, in those big cities, uh, there's the, another diagram by uh, the uh, United Nations to understand actually uh, in big cities is easier or happens more related to natural hazards. So further is one of them but also has uh, the other type like such as uh, hurricane or the other things like erosion or sub land subsidence. So um, this is uh, the common issue. So plus together uh, is quite easy to have uh, the um, higher risk or uh, the higher uh, weight of hazard issues. And, uh, but it's very hard to avoid issues, for example, uh, we also talk about climate change. So uh, we talk about climate change, so people will uh, concern about global sea level rise as well. So um, those, those issues is happening, and then, um, but uh, because we can't just move a lot of people who have already lived in coastal cities to somewhere, right? So this is, the risk will be quite uh, emerging and increasing as well for uh, the next uh, two or three decades. So, for example, um, if you want to see some big pictures, I've got it. And uh, for example, in 2011, uh, I think people normally uh, visit Bangkok quite recently, right, or quite frequent. So uh, Bangkok just had the big flood in 2011. So uh, this is one of the pictures. And um, this is happening because of the uh, large rainfall in the river, called Chopai River. And that river is outlet in Bangkok. Actually, the river is not at, like just located in Bangkok. It's long rivers from uh, northern Thailand all the way to Bangkok because Bangkok goes to the Gulf of Thailand. And uh, that is why um, the rainfall is keep happening at uh, the North uh, Thailand, but it's a big rain for a long period, like more than two or three months. So uh, at the end of the day, uh, the, the rivers go out and want to uh, all the way go through to the Bangkok and Gulf of Thailand outlet. So that happened to the Bangkok quite seriously flooding by the river flood. So this is the picture from satellite image uh, before flooding. So you can see uh, the area in North Bangkok is have the green space, no problem, and the river is tiny, it's okay. 
but you can see on, on the other side after flooding in October, you can see a lot of sediments occur. It's not just a sediment actually because of the flood water has been uh, immersed in those areas. And then um, that is uh, another issue. It's not coastal city, but uh, is another Chinese city. It's just got a big flood in 2016. Uh, the city called Wuhan. Many people have gone there for visiting already. So uh, this is happening because of the intensive rainfall as well. So uh, this is the picture taken at uh, quite close to Wuhan University, one of the biggest universities in China. And then you can see the water just uh, submerged inside a uh, subway or tube or underground station. And uh, so actually uh, people are helping each other to rescue or to uh, get away from the flood water. So you can see uh, people just jumping out of the window or um, uh, there's some police is helping with the boat. And, um, also, the other cities like uh, look at Bangladesh in Dhaka in 2007, 2011, 2014 and 2015 also have floods. And uh, because in Dhaka the situation of flood is big issue is big flood normally because of few, uh, um, few reasons. One of the things is they got the spring water melt from Himalaya mountain and cross the storm and then it's quite difficult to avoid flooding. So um, this is the issue uh, in that column. If it's flood, it's uh, maybe flood the whole city. So uh, it will appear some issues, for example, fresh water availability and uh, disease spread and people lost homes and food security as well. So um, from that car, look at some cities that we we are more familiar called Singapore. So Hong Kong and Singapore always compare to each other, right? So I have uh, published latest paper on Hong Kong, Singapore, and flood management. So that's why I got uh, the latest paper, latest picture from uh, this January. Uh, Singapore just got flooded, and also the two pictures uh, on the bottom is uh, was flooded in 2011. But if you say uh, Singapore is too far, so let's talk about Hong Kong as well. And uh, just last August, uh, after Typhoon Haito, I think some of you, if you live close to the Hong Kong East, like Hong Kong Island East side, like Hang Fa Estate or uh, Taiwan, and this this is happening, like the seawater just overflowed to to the city, and. Um, if you say that Haito is okay in Hong Kong, but in Macau it's not okay because like, it killed eight people because like, the flood water just get into the car park and then uh, to flood the car park, so people in the car park got killed, you know. So uh, this is the picture of that car park, you know. And uh, that is just introduction of our like coastal cities normally face uh, flooding that quite seriously. But uh, we talk back on the, um, uh, why the risk is that high, actually because of population. So why population is going? Uh, one of the things is like uh, related to the open door policy. So everybody may know that it is from the um, uh, uh, reason, not just from the um, pretty girl on the beach and in, uh, attract the investment from overseas company is because that person called Deng Xiaoping so um, he developed or as established the open door policy in the year I was born in 1979 and uh, those those policy um, like uh, one of the features is the special economic zones in the coastal city so this is the plan of San Tau and uh, normally the cities they built uh, is has a lot of concerns like one is the port like Hong Kong built a great port but actually uh, beside the port they build lots of factories like for economic bells and those things so once they finish the production can export immediately so that's why those port cities is uh, really attractive for foreign investment. So with foreign investment, so that's why uh, the companies goes really fast, and also um, that attracts what 
and employment, you know, you need workers to uh, work in that kind of company. So that's why a lot of internal migration from east part, or middle part of China, just move to that kind of coastal cities quite often. So that's why, like uh, a lot of coastal cities, suddenly the population go really, really fast. And uh, for example, uh, normally maybe our classmates or students maybe we visit Sunjun quite often in the weekend buy something or during some leisure things, you know. Uh, Sunjun nowadays uh, have like uh, unofficially like more than 15 million people, yeah. But officially like um, more than 12 million or later state will be more than 18 million later. But uh, Sunjun was a really little tiny fisherman town before 1950. So got the pictures from uh, journey service department on the same uh, region on Sunjun River. Of course, the river has been channelized, so you can see the river is quite different. But um, uh, nowadays, like compared to 1950s, you you know the Sunjun River two sides is very different. In our side, still have my poor wetland and fish pond and things like that. So in our side, it's very green. But on the other side is actually the hub of transport or um, like uh, hotels or economic hope. So uh, it's big different, massive different. So uh, this is the uh, study from the University of Hong Kong and uh, from 1988 to 2008 is quite old already what they done the study so to look at the catchment expansion or urbanization. So you can see the purple color is is the urbanized area, so it's keep expanding. So that means the like uh, Sunjun actually is the town expand really fast for urbanization. And uh, look forward. So for 2015, we talk about the big S3 zone, economic zone now is really hot topic, right? So uh, uh, power of the Delta will be more and more and more people, like more than expect more than one one hundred twenty million people. So uh, population keep uh, rising and uh, house related flood then, you know. So uh, one thing is we have really heavy rainfall. So uh, the rainfall is heavy uh, on more scale. So look at this diagram from uh, Hong Kong Observatory in uh, 2010. Uh, some area for 24 hours is more than 300, 400 to 500 millimeters. So that's why it's called very really intensive rainstorm. And uh, it's, not, it's, it's not a hiding story. Some countries like dry or we call semi-arid or arid country, for example, like uh, in Middle East or uh, North Africa, the annual uh, rainfall is only 500 millimeters. Uh, but we got that rainfall for 24 hours. You know? So that's why uh, this kind of rainfall normally hit the town quite seriously. And uh, not just on the 2010 July uh, 22nd on that day, but also the other day, for example, 2014 and uh, March 31st. So uh, we got another 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 intensive rainfall. So this is uh, more than 100 millimeters within three hours. Okay, so uh, this is quite seriously. Uh, so after that, uh, this is uh, the shopping mall called Fast Fast. Rock, right? So close to just beside City University of Hong Kong, and uh, the shopping malls further. Why the shopping malls further? It's not because it's rain. It's actually because the rainfall is too much on the roof. So that's why the pipe on the roof broke, and so that, that's why the rainwater just get directly immersed into the shopping. So this is the, the study I found out from the, uh, the flood insurance in commercial buildings that defined by RICS just finished last year. And uh, so you can see the best of it rock is like that, you know. So um, in the, in the, they, after they've broken the, <coughs> the pipe. And uh, uh, this is the uh, railway station of Kowloon Tong, it's all flood. But uh, luckily, the, I'm a big fan. I was studying in New Zealand with uh, Pauline, so I pay up. You know, I, I pay up before now I retire. Yeah. But uh, I support the team for all backs in New Zealand. So that's why they also come to Hong Kong in that year of that day. The Hong Kong Stadium still okay, so the rugby is still going on, but uh, it's a happy storm. Okay. 
And uh, so that's why I uh, have done that study with the RICS, so I uh, have been interviewed a lot of property manager, including Vance Brock, and understand the issue of FERC. So um, in that kind of intensive rainfall, I need to emphasize uh, drainage service department in Hong Kong has been done a lot of work and also has been quite outstanding to improve the urban flood uh, protection level to one of the top, top, top level in Asia around the other cities. So just published a paper about that. Uh, as good as Singapore, I would say. And uh, but in that kind of rainfall, uh, you can see those uh, urban flooding will still be happening in Kowloon. Okay, so that's why uh, this picture talking at Mong Kok. And um, so um, you can imagine also because Hong Kong actually, yeah, everybody live close to their Ping or Fat Pong area by fragment. But Hong Kong still have a uh, lot of hilly areas. So you can imagine if those areas has been uh, experiencing intensive rainfall, fresh flood will just, you know, flush down like the Dang Pu. So, uh, like uh, in 20, on 23rd of July 2010, as the village, uh, village people has been just. Um, uh, swept away uh, when 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 that person walked uh, along the bridge. So unfortunately, he uh, he was died. So um, it also happened uh, in 2001. So we have the river flood in uh, Mtong River and those Shang Yu River in Shang Shui. And uh, other than intensive rainfall to cause flooding, we also has problem <coughs> caused flooding by coastal coastal issues. So uh, any people who has been Tayo or has been visit Tayo, so Tayo is one of the hot spot of coastal flooding because Tayo is very low area. So um, not just uh, happened in Tayo coastal flood before, it was happened like uh, in 1962 in Happy Valley. So uh, in Tin Shui Wai has been also experienced the coastal flood before. But in Taiwan, it happened quite recently. So this is the picture taken by uh, TVB at uh, 2008 after Typhoon Hector in Taiwan. And uh, just just explain a little bit on storm surge. Sorry, I should do it. And uh, once Typhoon come normally, we will not. All Typhoon will not cause storm surge, but some Typhoon will do if the pressure of the sea is low and drag up the sea water to the very high tide level. So um, then you can see a diagram on this like bottom. So when the storm surge happens, so the tide level normally will be higher one to two meters. Okay. So if you have a very good coastal wall or embankment, it still have chance to be over top. Okay. So this is quite uh, an issue. And uh, this is not Hong Kong, it's talking by uh, in Somerset in the southwest of UK. So you can see the when the storm surge happened, it will cause like that. And um, this is Shang Wan. So Shang Wan is in the coastal area, of course. Uh, but uh, how come Shang Wan also has been fed by coastal water? That is because the inland of Shang Wan is not quite close to the quite close to the coastline, right? Yeah, but it happens because a lot of drainage actually in Shang Wan goes to the sea. But uh, if the storm surge comes, so the sea water actually get to the drainage and flood back to the uh, roads. Okay, so this is what it happens in June, July. Uh, uh, sorry, June on seventh, uh, two thousand eight. Especially if the uh, if that they still have uh, intensive rainfall, so the the intensive rainfall because the land use has been changed. Low soil, soil is very important to absorb water. Low soil or concrete, so uh, the water just go to the pipe. Right? If they go to the pipe, and then actually the pipe inside has got sea water, so the pipe cannot do the job. So that's what it happens. Okay. And uh, actually, so I do some study on the, with the DSD. So what type of uh, 
high tide and warm tide rainfall will cause uh, the uh, flooding in Shangwan so or this kind of area. And then actually it has happened since uh, 2000, uh, 2000 and it's not just in 2008 UN, actually in 2001 to 2008 has been happened five, six times. So uh, normally if it rains like uh, more than 150 millimeters plus the high tide more than uh, two or three meters, it, it could happen, the, the, the urban flood in the town. And um, so um, this kind of rainfall is not uh, very, I would say, is not very uh, unusual. It's, common, it's coming to be more and more common now. So uh, we need to be aware of these kind of things. And of course, uh, if um, your shop got further, that will be a disaster. If your shop not got further, you don't care, right? So, um, some dry seafood uh, retail shop got further, that is a big story. Because, as you know, dry seafood is very expensive, like shark fin. I, I don't support people to eat shark fin anyway, but um, dry shark fin is quite expensive. Very expensive, you know. If if you flood those dry seafood, maybe lose uh, ten million Hong Kong dollar quite easily in a day, you know. And uh, I interview all the dry seafood shop in Shanghai for the project, and then no insurance company want to insure them. Okay. No, because they know the they can't afford once it really flood, uh, they can't compensate that much money for the premium they they, they provide for monthly. So, um, yeah, of course, like in the wet day, it happens like that, you know, uh, it causes problems on transport and things like that. But in the dry days, no problem, nobody cares. So this is the issue. And uh, yeah, published some papers uh, on this kind of postal first already. And um, so for future, further exposure, um, actually, um, Robert Nichols from Southampton and also work with OECD have uh, published uh, top 20 coastal cities that uh, exposed to coastal flooding in 2070s uh, by the ranking. Of course, I need to be emphasis. Only when I talk about this, people will ask me lots of questions. But uh, they rank this based on if we don't do anything, you know, don't improve the exist flood management strategies and don't do any climate change adaptation, that will be still uh, have the exposure with those assets or future exposure. So um, let's say the ranking is like that if we don't do anything, so um, we can see quite lots of Chinese cities uh, or Asian cities that is in the ranking table, including us in Hong Kong, uh, or our labor, Guangzhou and Shanghai and my town in now for the work. So I uh, has also a uh, concern about that, so I uh, published another paper about fabrics and legacy. So I developed um, a framework to look at uh, how to do the uh, sustainable fab management. So talk about sustainable, it's very hard to make sure you do the sustainable that type term. But uh, if we talk about sustainable, normally we talk about social, environmental, economic, but plus the drivers like governance and climate change. So this is the uh, uh, framework that uh, we have been developed and he has published the papers well to talk about this framework, so I'm not uh, go through with detail. But uh, use the framework, uh, it's quite useful to a place if you can do a better or sustainable fat management by different type of sub themes or different kind of parameters. So um, we just use this uh, has been uh, appraised. So uh, what the Delta Delta cities, including Hong Kong, is doing. So um, we have found some interesting issue. For example, for example, uh, nobody care about after third to affect your physical or mental health yet because I. After further, a lot of cities, people will be quite scary, you know, like uh, uh, they will think about that third and then because their home has been lost or they, they have been drunk or they have been had uh, affected by side effects or something. So a lot of mental health problems that have been record after further, especially back first. 
So, um, like for example, in Hong Kong, Shenzhen, or Guangzhou, these kind of cities, like, uh, the government has not started to look at uh, mental health issues yet after the birth. But also, uh, you talk about uh, if we talk about um, uh, flood management, to particularly look about you know like uh, like us, you know, we are strong, we run fast, we can escape fast. But how about old people or disabilities or children? They may not running as far as us. They may need help if it's flooding. You know, um, I think uh, the. Um, Authorities has not not particular on this area in this not just Hong Kong, not just Hong Kong, but in, in most of uh, cities around Delta, Delta, across Asia as well. And um, how about the public area infrastructure is okay? You know, they will particularly take care of uh, bus stop or those services, make sure you got enough protection. But uh, is no particular local guidance on this yet. How about flood risk awareness? Like more and more uh, is uh, quite helpful because of the mobile technology or plus the apps, right? So it's quite helpful. But the Hong Kong Authority also do a good job, but uh, there's still quite a lot of awareness issues because people don't get used to understand this flood risk, you know. And uh, also post flood A and support this is an issue as well. So I interview a lot of people actually. Where well, if you're lucky because you don't get fed, but if you your home is really got fed, actually uh, in 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 Hong Kong or in a lot of cities that has not developed the aid to support, for example, give you some urgent money to buy something or to replace the electricians or applicants and things like that in your home is not available yet, or to fix your home or something. So. Um, uh, for the equality issue, that is not an issue only uh, to look after minority people or something because like uh, uh, actually um, a lot of things has not that go to that detail yet. But for flood emergency plan, it has been established uh, in Thai particular uh, after those coastal flood. So um, that is the 2008 uh, third from Thai also government has done something yeah for example um, after that uh, to sort out the rubbish uh, garbage issues and also um, I found um, the um, governments now either um, on the Hong Kong side or Sundran or Guangzhou, uh, a lot of uh, popular issues, for example, Spun City look at green, uh, green approach to look at environmental issues that has been really invest a lot of money and done some work, you know. So this is the work that we understand by the General Service Department in 1990s uh, to enlarge the rivers because of those first, but uh, on that time, uh, they just want to announce rivers as large as possible to avoid the uh, uh, intensive rainfall or discharge certainly from Daimo Sun or Daimo Mountain. Say. And, uh, but you look at the rivers uh, channelized like that, so where's ecology? Yeah, no ecology, right? And um, even the river bed has been concrete, you know? so um, it's hard, you know, it's difficult. And uh, so a lot of NGOs in Hong Kong actually done a lot of work and, and not just criticize, but encourage the government like to look at the, uh, this issue when they do the uh, river project. So that's why after that, uh, in 2010, after that, um, up to 2014, uh, in the last stage of Sunjan River regulation project, they start to use the soft methods. So uh, you can see uh, they try to reserve those with a bank or with a bed, at least to find something, you know. So um, and leave more area for the, uh, for example, river marshland for ecology. So those small fish that uh, only is the species from Hong Kong and uh, will be um, conserved, they said will be conserved. Um, I need to update the data with the WWF people, but uh, they say they will conserve this type of fish. And um, 
the lastly, the framework also including the climate change and governance. So, um, as I understand, the government has stopped to work on climate change quite actively. But at the moment, because like uh, there's a lot of issues or a lot of arrangements, so the the actually the authority who work for climate change in Hong Kong is by the Environmental Protection Department, and uh, based on that department, it's quite difficult for them to do a lot of different things because uh, they have their duties on the Environmental Protection Department, and those climate change issues long you need to cross over to many departments as well. So uh, they, I think they have done their job, but uh, it's still a lot of work by different departments to work together on the, uh, to establish the adaptation plan. As far as I know, uh, on the study I found, um, uh, they has been started consultation work, but uh, so far is no any update yet. So I think they will release more uh, documents or uh, plans later. And uh, for Public participation or stakeholder engagement, I think uh, in Hong Kong I would see uh, this issue is getting more and more uh, active. So a lot of NGOs or a lot of public are <coughs> concerned about those issues. So uh, I think it's a very good sign. But um, there are still a lot of uh, things like, uh, for example, the public can, cannot directly get into the decision making group or something. So it's still not as uh, has been um, uh, fully engaged as the, compared to the UK or America or things like that. And um, for the drainage master plan, actually the drainage uh, service department has been established for a long time. So since uh, late 1990s or early 2000s. So that's why you can see the channel has been at last really, really massive. Because normally the rivers in Hong Kong are very small actually, but uh, they enlarge to the river size can actually against one in 200 years uh, third issues. Oh, so um, you can see the rivers has been enlarged uh, that wide, uh, especially in dry season you can see it's low water, that's why. But in wet season it may have some water. But um, that's why a lot of um, areas in Hong Kong you see the color color areas, it has been covered by drainage service department, those drainage masterworks, at least to defend you for one in 50 years foot or rainstorm. But of course, if we talk about uh, you have 100 millimeters uh, rainwater from three and four hours, for three to four hours, you still will get hurt in the town. Yeah. But uh, normally, if not that intensive magnitude of the rainstorm, you'll be okay. Yeah, especially in a color area. But if you live not in a color, color area, you, you need to worry more because uh, the normal uh, uh, third protection standard is still okay, just one in five to one in ten years. You know, so it's okay. It has you you will be protected, but not as serious as the color area in Hong Kong. So uh, this is the table that I made from the DSD. So a lot of a lot of areas is really high standard, you know, in Asia especially. And um, in Tai O is also the build a uh, coastal flood wall to defend one part of the time uh, if it got high tide. So the the coastal flood wall has been built, but. Um, if you say, you know, build a coastal flood wall is not um, uh, enough, you know, to address the issue. So actually, Tayo now has been established a contingency plan. So for example, this is the, uh, the other super typhoon in 2013 is coming. So uh, they will actually release the announcement to ask people to be prepared uh, before the typhoon comes two days. And then uh, there's the police and ask people if they need help, they can get some help, you know, and the police will prepare boats uh, to rescue people and the civil service team will actually help some people who need to move the expensive furniture or uh, electric, electrical applicants, for example, fridge or your washing machine to some safe areas. And uh, some people will prepare the um, uh, will prepare the sandbag and things like that. So um, sorry, just like previous, yeah. 
so um, to prepare send back so um, they they will do something to prepare and also I'm going to talk here is the primary school in Thai also um, uh, it has four four so in the top four they have some space for people to live as a shelter room if your room got flooded unfortunately so you just need to register it has the air condition and also the fridge for you to use it uh, if your home unluckily got flooded so it's okay it's free of charge as well and um, uh, so that is the picture taken <coughs> by the um, uh, Eddie. He's my friend, living Thai, always a uh, social worker. So um, uh, he actually took some pictures after the Haito, not just for uh, Hong Kong East, but also for Thai on 23rd of August. So uh, that is the CAS people, service, uh, civil service people, to help people to to rescue or to leave their home uh, after filling. And uh, talk about the Shang Wan third before. So now the DSD has got the pump. So they will actually, uh, if those uh, high tide water comes again to heat central area, and the pump will do the job to pump out the sea water as well. So, so far it works. So far after that 2008, I've heard uh, there's no uh, serious flood in Xiangwan. That means the pump at the moment do the job in those uh, typhoons that after 2008. And the pump is located underground of that park. So you may actually, if you go to Hong Kong Stock Exchange bus stop, you know, you may stop somewhere here. But uh, if you look at the certain why it says pump, normally un under the pump it has the pump, you know, that pump is located in that area, okay. And uh, so this is uh, the storage of the, of the pump under, under the pump. And also uh, in the uh, mountainside, uh, just besides, actually just beside the University of Hong Kong, uh, they actually built the West Hong Kong Western Drainage Tunnel. So why, why they build a tunnel? Because they want to capture those intensive rainfall and hence discharge water from the mountain to the to heat the Shangwan or Central Area. So that's why they they just want to um, uh, catch some water from the mid mountain. So. Um, so they build a check, uh, drainage tunnel all the way from uh, that um, meat mountain all the way to the uh, cyber ports. Okay, cyber port and release to the.